Thanks to OpenCV, you can now integrate face recognition in just a few minutes and less than 10 lines of code. In collaboration with 7th Sense, they have just released their new beta face recognition to the public. Not only is it state-of-the-art, scoring top 10 in the 2022 NIST face recognition challenge, it requires no prerequisite knowledge of machine learning, nor a GPU, as it operates purely through API calls. Sound interesting? Then let's get started. This video is split into three parts, basic setup, more advanced examples, and a high-level explanation on the theory behind face recognition. If you want to skip ahead at any point, use the timestamp shown on screen now, or use the chapters in the video timeline. Before you can code anything, you first need to set up an account to be able to access the API. Sign up at developer.opencv.fr. If you encounter any issues while signing up, try clearing your cookies or switching web browsers. Once you log in, you gain access to the web user interface as well as your developer API key. Note that you can perform the majority of actions, such as adding or editing users, via the website, but doing so programmatically is both easier and more scalable. To begin, install the OpenCV face recognition package via pip. Then, in your favorite text editor, create a new Python or Jupyter file. You'll start by importing the necessary packages, then setting up the SDK. The backend URL is whichever cloud storage region you chose to keep your data in. The developer key can be accessed via the website. Simply click the copy button shown here. You'll use these two parameters to initialize the SDK as shown. To add a person to your database, you first need to import person base. Note that this is already installed as part of the OpenCV face recognition pip package. From there, adding a person is as simple as specifying a list of paths of images of them, as well as their name, and sending the request to the server. Note that the accuracy of the evaluation is improved by the number of images, and for this reason, it is recommended that you have three or more images from differing perspectives. For this basic demo, I'll just add two people, myself and Elon Musk. To search for people against database entries, start by importing both search request and optionally search mode. Then, simply search for the person by image using the search request function and send it to the server. Here, you can see that the application successfully identified me with a confidence of about 93%. And that's it for the basics. In just a few minutes and a few lines of code, you've already set up state-of-the-art face recognition in Python. Of course, OpenCV provides more tools to the users that want them. If you want to separate people into different categories, for example, for workspace distinction, collections are your answer. To start, import collection base. To create a collection, give it a name and a description, then pass the request to the server. Now, when adding a user, you can choose to add them to a collection. For this example, I'll make two collections, one for regular people and one for celebrities. To the celebrities collection, I'll add someone who's been on the news recently, Sam Bankman Freed. Now, listing the users out, you can see that he's been added and that he shows up in the celebrities collection. The API also supports updating information about people, for example, to add them retroactively into a collection. First, get the person by ID, this is found by printing out the users, then use the get function. From there, you can update whatever information your heart desires from their collection to their name. Make a request to the server to finalize the changes. When searching, you can provide various parameters to increase specificity, including a minimum confidence, which collection to search, and whether to prefer accuracy or speed. If, instead of searching for a user, you simply want to verify them, then use a verification request as shown. Here, you can see me trying to verify my face against Elon Musk's does not work, so I would in fact not be able to hack into his security system. There are many more advanced features for users, including a test to quantify whether the person is real or a printed picture, and more specific sorting functions. If you want the full documentation on any of the functions provided by the SDK, check out the OpenCV developer docs at docs.opencv.fr slash python. You've probably heard me say multiple times now that this face recognition is state of the art. So let's see how it holds up in some harder examples. Let's have it search for me again, but this time with sunglasses at a different angle and with worse lighting. Can it still identify me? It sure looks like it. 
it's still 77% confident that that's me. For most applications, a threshold of about 70% works. For mask users, try 60. How about doppelgangers? Let's try with these two people from a New York Times article on them. Could your evil lookalike hack into your building? Evidently not, as the confidence score is a mere 55%. How about if the pictures are outdated? You don't want to be constantly updating verification photos. Let's try this old picture of Elon Musk back in his PayPal days. Can the neural network look through time? Of course it can. 81% confidence even after the hair transplant. As you can see, the OpenCV model holds up flawlessly, and you can trust its accuracy regardless of the situation. Now, for a high-level explanation on the theory behind face recognition. Modern face recognition techniques differ from traditional ones in that they utilize deep learning. That is to say, instead of the researcher specifying points of interest, the network learns for itself. One traditional algorithm, for example, uses a histogram of local binary patterns obtained by splitting up an image into a grid. By contrast, modern neural networks learn features on their own through the process of training on millions or even billions of faces and being tasked with correctly identifying them. These features can then be used to place a person's face into a very high dimensional space, which makes vanishingly little sense to us, but for the network it's the perfect solution. We can try and visualize what the network is doing by projecting this higher dimensional space into 3D. In this crude example, enrolling a person places their faces into 3D space. Faces that are similar cluster together, forming small groups of identification. When someone's face is searched, the network checks the distance to the nearest cluster. If it falls within a cluster, then it can say that the face belongs to that person. If it is nowhere near any of the clusters, then the network can be confident that the person has not been registered. And that is how to use the OpenCV Face Recognition API and the theory behind it. Hello, I'm Jeff, a high school student and the one that made the video you just watched. If you have any suggestions for the future, please let me know. Thank you for watching.